it is not recognized very much in our society, in our world, that human beings have an inner world and an outer world. We have a world, we have a side of ourselves that needs to act, manifest, to take care of our family, to earn our living, to accomplish things, to invent, to travel, to, to live, to take care of the earth, to do all sorts of things which human beings can really do remarkably. But there's this inner part, and it's not just the, psycho, the, the psychological desires and things, but there's an inner life within us which we have lost touch with entirely. And we, uh, we sometimes um, experience it, as I said before, in moments of danger, moments of crisis, moments of extraordinary beauty, moments of great love, moments, say, when your, your child is just born, moments of connection with the loved one, or moments of of just sometimes just you don't know why, but they appear these moments of what you might call uh, the real or the higher or the the real self appears. There's a real self inside there, a real I that's covered over. It hasn't been born. It hasn't. It's not able to appear, and that's our real identity is connected to that. The thing we call ourselves has been culturally conditioned. It's not that it's bad altogether, it's just a cultural uh, fact, a cultural product of an interaction of outside influences in my own mind and emotional nature and body. That, that cultural, f uh, fic not a fiction, but that cultural psychological product, you can call it ego if you like, but that has so many loaded meanings nowadays, but it's, it's the surface self, if you like, that we need, we, we damn well need it in our life, it's important. But there's this other self that we're born to, to come in touch with, to open to, that really gives life meaning. Without that, we're just are like little puppets, we're born, we're conditioned, we get our money, we get our food, we make our babies, and we die, that's, and that's it.